the battle between Samsung and Apple for dominance of the lucrative smartphone market hotted up this week, with the Korean manufacturer throwing its considerable weight behind the launch of the latest Galaxy phone incarnation, the S3. It will hope to build on the success of its predecessor, the S2, which has given Samsung a dominant lead in high-end Android phones and a smartphone market share only narrowly behind that of Apple's iPhone. These super phones, as some call them, are big business for handset makers, not least for the high margins and loyal fan bases, but the competition is fierce. But Samsung thinks it's got a hit on its hands, according to Stephen Taylor, the vice president for its brands in Europe. The most exciting thing I think about it is that every way you interact with the phone, you just get a better user experience. Mm. So S Voice, which is actually an improvement on the voice command, has actually got the ability to pick up your voice even with background noise. You can actually turn music up and down, for example. And there's a great feature, certainly I'll use it, which is actually you can snooze your alarm. In true Apple fashion, the hype behind the Samsung Galaxy S3 had been built over weeks of teaser campaigns and the usual drip of leaks and rumours. The launch, which is the company's largest ever for a phone, was spectacular, with some 2,000 people in London's Earl's Court for a glitzy show and tell that impressed the watching analysts and customers. Indeed, the phone lives up to its billing with a high definition, resolution and a host of innovations that put it clearly on top of its other Android rivals, from multitasking screens to a camera that reacts to your eye movements. This is bad news perhaps for other Android makers such as HTC and also for other platforms such as the Windows phones made by Nokia. But whether it will best the forthcoming iPhone 5 in the super phone race is another matter entirely. For Samsung, this is a key launch and will keep it ahead of the pack in smartphones, but it may not be enough to take over from the leader in the field just yet. This is Daniel Thomas, Telecom's correspondent for the Financial Times.